There are more earthquakes a year than you may realize. And while some of them are barely noticeable or happen in the middle of the ocean, some strike land with a terrifying intensity that can cause a devastating amount of damage and completely pull the rug out from under civilization, throwing everything and everyone's lives into total chaos. Have you ever wondered what the biggest recorded earthquake in the history of the world was? Do you know where most earthquakes happen in the world? And is it possible that earthquakes could become more powerful as time goes on? Watch the video to find out answers to these questions and more. It is estimated that there are 500,000 detectable earthquakes each year worldwide. Out of those half a million quakes, 100,000 of them can be felt, and 100 or so usually cause damage. On average, earthquakes with a magnitude of two and smaller happen several hundred times a day and there may be as many as 20 to 25 magnitude 7 earthquakes around the globe. A great earthquake on the magnitude scale of 8 or higher happens once every 1 to 2 years. How are earthquakes measured? We'll get to that in a minute. Breaking the figures down by month and if only earthquakes of a magnitude of 4.0 or higher are taken into consideration, the worst month was July with 1,250 detected quakes, while the next month was the lowest with just 665. The only other month with less than 1,000 was September with 710 recorded quakes, while the rest of the year was as follows. 1,206 quakes in January, 1,040 in February, 1,124 in March, 1,160 in April, 1,017 in May, and 1,187 in June. But what do we mean when we say magnitude of 4.0 or higher? There are two known ways to measure an earthquake. First is the Richter scale, which was developed by Charles Richter in 1935. The other measuring system for monitoring the magnitude of earthquakes is known as the Modified Mercalli Intensity Scale sometimes simply called the MM or MMI. The modified Mercalli Intensity Scale is an updated version of the original Mercalli Intensity Scale, pioneered by the Italian volcanologist Giuseppe Mercalli in 1902. Ironically, it was Charles Richter who gave the scale its updated form and its purpose is to measure the intensity of shaking and subsequent effects of an earthquake at any given location on a scale from 1 to 12. Intensity 1 is referred to as not felt and is described in the official MMI table as not felt except by a few under especially favorable circumstances. Intensity 12 is also referred to as extreme and is described in the aforementioned table as damage total. Waves can be seen on ground surfaces, lines of sight and level will be distorted, and even objects can be thrown upward into the air. There has only been a handful of 9.0 or higher earthquakes in the world. A magnitude 9 tremor is a lot stronger than an 8. And even though they are rare, a giant quake can happen at any moment. The most powerful ever recorded was a magnitude 9.5 earthquake that happened in Chile on May 22, 1960. There has not yet been an earthquake recorded that has been more powerful. And powerful earthquakes persist even today. When ranking by this system, the greatest earthquake of 2019 was in Peru on May 26th, coming in at 8.0, or severe. Striking at 2.41 a.m. local time, the quake lasted only 60 seconds, yet in that brief time still damaged 833 homes and 38 health centers and 11 schools. Most of the structures were damaged beyond repair. The catalyst for this devastating quake is the fact that Peru lies just above a destructive plate boundary, where the Nazca Plate subducts between the South American Plate. As a result, Peru is a region of major seismic activity, with 200 minor earthquakes occurring every year, and more than 70 significant ones striking since 1568. While that sounds like a long stretch of time, 70 major earthquakes in that period come out to about one devastating quake roughly every six years. Some of the more infamous quakes include August 15, 2007, when 58,000 homes were destroyed by the lima Calau earthquake, or October 28, 1746, which almost leveled the Peruvian capital, 
and the 1868 Arica earthquake, which had a magnitude of 9.0, causing complete destruction in the southern part of Peru. Being a place of such consistent seismic events, it should come as no surprise that the May 26th quake was not the only Peruvian earthquake of 2019, as just a mere two months before that, the Peruvian province of Puno was hit by an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.0, making it the ninth most intense of 2019 thus far. Despite being a strong quake, there were fortunately no reports of injuries as it hit in the sparsely populated Andes region, just northeast of the town of Azangaro, right near Peru's border with Bolivia. But not all the 2019 earthquakes were in Peru. Just 21 days before the 8.0 on May 26th, there was a 7.1 in Papua New Guinea, and a mere eight days later, the country was hit by an even stronger 7.6 magnitude quake. The 7.1 struck 20.5 miles northwest of the town of Bulolo, with a depth of 79 miles beneath the planet's surface, and fortunately caused little significant or permanent damage, though there were reports of power cuts and things falling off shelves. This quake hit at around 7.20 a.m. local time and was felt as far away as the capital city of Port Moresby, more than 155 miles away. While an earthquake of this magnitude in this part of the world would normally be a tsunami risk, it was fortunately so deep that the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center assured the people of Papua New Guinea that there was no risk of the incident triggering a tsunami. And fortunately, this turned out to be true. Quakes are common, and the country sits atop the circum-Pacific Belt, also referred to as the Ring of Fire. This 25,000-mile horseshoe-shaped area is in the basin of the Pacific Ocean and is associated with a continuous ring of volcanic belts and plate movements. There are 452 volcanoes across the Ring of Fire, and 90% of all the world's earthquakes occur here. The Circum-Pacific Belt is a direct result of the movement and collisions of lithospheric plates, otherwise known as plate tectonics. The easternmost section of the ring is the previously mentioned subduction of the Nazca Plate, while farther west the Pacific Plate is subducted along the Kamchatka Peninsula, which arcs just past Japan. Also lying on the Ring of Fire is Ecuador, which was hit by the third strongest earthquake of 2019, a 7.5 magnitude tremor in the Pastaza province, which coincidentally struck on the 8th anniversary of the infamous earthquake in Christchurch. That earthquake caused widespread and substantial damage across New Zealand's second largest city. It hit without warning just before dawn in Ecuador's Amazon region, a mere 10 miles from the nearest town. Montalvo, near Ecuador's border with, you guessed it, Peru. The effects of the quake were felt in both the Ecuadorian capital of Quito and the nearby coastal city of Guayaquil. In the 30 minutes that followed, there were two substantial aftershocks, the first one coming in at 6.06 .06 and the second one at 6.6. .6. A mere three years earlier, Ecuador was struck by a magnitude 7.8 quake that destroyed hundreds of homes and caused more than $3 billion worth of property damage. Fortunately, Ecuador President Lenin Moreno happily reported that there was no major damage during the 2019 quake. But there was a fear that history was repeating itself as the fourth strongest earthquake of 2019 actually happened in New Zealand. But it wasn't Christchurch this time. The Kermadec Islands, 541 miles northeast of the New Zealand town of Gunguru, were hit by an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.3 and a depth of 6 miles. As a volcanic archipelago, the Kermadec Islands are prone to frequent earthquakes, which is why, rather fortunately, there are no permanent settlements on the islands, meaning devastation was minimal. Of an equal magnitude was an earthquake in the Banda Sea, striking near Indonesia's Tanimbar Islands. The tremors were intense enough that they were felt as far away as the north of Australia. Earthquakes here are common, as this part of the sea also sits in the Ring of Fire, victim to an estimated 500,000 detectable earthquakes each year. Much like the quake of the Kermadec Islands, the location meant that, while its ranking on the MMI was very strong, the location meant little to no damage was done to human civilization. The same cannot be said sadly for the 7.2 earthquake that devastated Indonesia just 10 days later. If the quake of the Banda Sea had not been enough, 
The North Maluku province was hit on July 14th at 1810 local time. Striking at a shallow depth of 6.2 miles, the North Maluku incident produced a non-destructive tsunami that crashed into the Indonesian port of Labuha minutes after the shaking had begun. 50,000 people were displaced amidst the chaos, with the cost of structural damages reaching 16 million. 980 structures had been either severely damaged or totally destroyed. Yeoman Village was one of the hardest hit areas, with a total of 164 houses and a mosque totally flattened, leaving the 686 residents no choice but to evacuate into the mountains. A total of 26 schools were reduced to bricks and dust, with a further 110 public facilities left in a similarly desperate state. The seventh strongest earthquake by magnitude was a 7.1 earthquake that hit California on July 5th. The same magnitude as one of the previously discussed in Papua New Guinea. But while the New Guinea quake had caused little damage due to its location, that was far from the case for the California event. Occurring north-northeast of the town of Ridgecrest, that's about 122 miles northeast of LA, the initial main quake was preceded by a string of smaller earthquakes on July 4th and followed by more than 1,400 aftershocks. The main quake cut power to at least 3,000 residents and was felt by 30 million Americans. During a July 4th foreshocks, two buildings caught on fire and a mobile home was also thrown clean off its foundations and subsequently deemed uninhabitable. Emergency personnel responded to almost two dozen incidents in the city, with many people injured due to falling debris and shattered glass. While many utility services temporarily shut down, as gas lines had broken. During the July 5th main shocks, many fires broke out and another 3,000 people were left without power. Following multiple rock slides, 50 homes were severely damaged and all roads to the city were rendered impassable. The damage across the two days was estimated to be in excess of a sizable $5.3 billion. All of this may sound a little scary, as if our planet is becoming more active and some of you may be wondering if earthquakes are increasing or decreasing globally. At a glance, 2019 has had the least recorded earthquakes for the last 10 years, 4,752 quakes less than 2018, though it is worth noting that the end of the year is not quite over. So far, there has been 9,834 recorded earthquakes, the lowest worldwide since 2009 when there were 8,862 earthquakes detected. Since 2010, we have consistently been between 12,000 to 15,000 detected seismic events per year. While it is not possible to detect when an earthquake will happen, or if they will become more frequent or powerful, they are something that you'll definitely hear more about in the future. We hope you enjoyed the video. Have you ever experienced an earthquake before? Tell us about your experience in the comments and if you like the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching.